So, good morning. Uh, today we will talk about email delivery and what are the factors that you should put in mind when you are sending massive amount of emails. So, we usually with the clients that we work with, we send something between uh, half a million to two million email every month. So, we encounter a lot of problems where uh, the campaigns are not effective. At the end of the day, what sells is how many leads you generate for your clients or how much sales you make for them. So email delivery is one important factor that we always look into, and it's one of the biggest issues that we have to deal with marketers to make them understand and appreciate the content that they create um, and adds value to their clients. Okay, so in, in today's session, we will talk about two elements. The first element, why email delivery is really important, then we will dive into the technical aspects and the non-technical aspects of email delivery. And then we will see how Motic help you actually achieve that kind of sending rates without hitting the spam uh, folder. So why is this important? Basically, if you are a marketer, you don't want to lose your efforts due to bad delivery rates. We've seen it before with real estate, for example, which is one of the most competitive industries out there where uh, the cost per lead can reach up to $100 uh, or 150 or sometimes in, in the US it could reach to $300 per lead. So if you send out mass emails to people who are not really interested in your content, you are losing your company reputation, your brand, your image. At the end of the day, you will lose a lot of money just sending out emails or sometimes in, in uh, some countries like the UAE, you will be fined for sending spam uh, in case you do it. You also, you don't need your IBs or your IP range to be blacklisted. Um, so like, frankly, if you get blacklisted, it's really, really, really hard to get your IBs and reputation back. And it's also, it, sometimes it breaks your domain itself reputation. So today we will talk about some practices that you can do. Uh, so like, this is like a red flag. When, whenever uh, you ask your, your customer, like, who do you want to send to? and they will go like 5 million emails in a mailing list we just purchased, don't, don't continue the conversation, just like run, don't stay there, like don't, don't talk to these guys anymore. And we've seen this case a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, especially with COVID. So you will have customers like, we are selling uh, face masks, we sell sanitizers, and we have this huge list of a billion emails that spans all over the world, just we need to send out emails to them. So before starting, I will share with you uh, some pointers to understand your uh, customers, to understand their needs, and based on that, you can start the email, campaign, uh, the email campaign properly before we head into the technical parts. So always ask your customer, what do you sell? Who do you sell it for? What is the customer persona? What are the common attributes of these customers? What brings them together? What divides them? Um, and I think one of the best tools that you can use is a business model canvas to understand your client's business because at the end of the day, you are a proxy of that client. So you need to understand their business. Who are their customers? Who are their partners? What is their value proposition? What triggers the customers? How time sensitive they are? What is the seasonality factors that they have in their business? Uh, is email marketing the only channel? Do they use other channels? How do they acquire leads? All of these questions together would make uh, an entry point for the strategy that you're going to build your uh, marketing campaign or email marketing campaign with. Also, you need to know their history. Like, how many emails do they send per day, per month? Uh, what, uh, what are the, what's the quality of these emails? What type of emails do they send? Are they marketing emails? Are they transactional emails? And what is the volume of each, that, uh, of each type? because that, that is the logical way of starting separating the outgoing traffic of emails on, on IPs. Then we will start talking about how clean your, your, your email list is. So most often you will have emails that are obsolete, stop, like uh, invalid emails, in, uh, like uh, bounced emails or uh, forwarded emails. So you need to clean and remove all of these emails out from the list. Also, those who are not interacting with your emails, they should be removed from the mailing list because that also would lower uh, your, your score. Also, ask the critical question, have you purchased a list? If they purchase the list, you need to scrub it. You need to have segmented, then you need to start slow. We will discuss this in a bit. Um, and, and like in Europe specifically, you need to ask, what is the level of permission you asked for when somebody submitted their information? 
Like, uh, are you like, do you have the permission to send them emails weekly, daily? And this is something that fortunately Moti can help you with. So that's very important. Um, do you have any kind of uh, sequence for sending welcome messages? Like when somebody signs up, is there a campaign where you send them uh, welcome messages to get them uh, prepared and get them ready to receive the rest of your content? And how often you change your content? And this is something that I advise all of you to uh, talk with the marketing managers and the, CTO, uh, the CMOs of the companies that you work with. Uh, to understand how frequently they change their content, uh, both in images, like assets, and the content itself, the text itself that they send within the email, and uh, how many types of templates they have for each specific type of emails. And if they send uh, emails via partners or affiliates, or if affiliates are sending on their name. So this is something that is really important to understand. So sometimes uh, partners and affiliates can be abusive, and they can use your client's name to send on their behalf, and eventually you would find specific keywords or triggering spam filters uh, without any obvious reason, okay? Um, so as for the content itself, uh, you always need to, to understand what is the goal of the campaign. Is it sales? Is it marketing? Is it branding? And based on that categorization, you can uh, measure the performance of each campaign. Um, and, uh, of course, on the stage of the company, you can assess and say this is a good campaign, this is a bad campaign, and how you can perform. Uh, from a, an investment point of view, you need to understand the ROI of each campaign that you send out. And this can only be measured if you have a full overview of the sales cycle, not just a marketer, like we send this amount of emails and this is the amount of clicks we have, this is the amount of opens, but furthermore down the line, how many leads we generated, how many deals we generated, how many sales we closed, and how much profit we were able to, uh, to make. Because uh, right now, I can see a lot of, of CEOs who would say email marketing is not efficient. We send out a lot of emails, but we don't know uh, how much money we are making out of that. So attribution and understanding how much money you are making from each channel would be very helpful in maintaining your clients as a motor provider and uh, like giving the proof and evidence of how effective your email marketing campaigns are. And uh, when you do that, you will have like a clean dashboard uh, comparing different channels to what, uh, to what email is doing. So Motic is really helpful with this, uh, uh, with this manner. So I, I divided how we can use Motic and we will show it in action uh, to, to help you uh, categorize your content and lists. So as for the content, it's, it's a very good practice and often misused or not used at all where you need to categorize your content as of emails, assets, and landing pages. I know a lot of your clients would resist categorizing that. So you will have like 100 pages saying uncategorized, but they are actually should be categorized for easy access and for management. And also it helps you track the performance of each component. So within Motic, you can find uh, how many clicks you have, how many opens for each single component. And you can always use a segment email to send out welcome sequences and to understand our, or onboard people into your uh, organization. As for the lists, you can use segments to divide your list into personas. It's a little bit hard. It takes a little time at the beginning with your clients to understand the persona and then to segment them based on common properties. So. With segmentation, we usually go with one of three. It's either uh, demographic or geographic or interest. Uh, so you either divide them based on where they live or, or uh, what kind of interest they have. This is a little bit hard to, to prop, like what people are interested in, but thanks to the tracking feature and uh, to the preference center, you can actually understand what people are looking to are looking for. And you also need to keep your, uh, your list fresh using the preference center where you can ask people to choose the segments they want to be part of, how many times they want to be contacted. So probably you know this configuration page. Um, I urge all of you to use the preference center and not to use the unsubscribe text alone because we've seen a common pattern in the past few months where lots of bots and protection system, when you send out emails, they will just send a bot out to your page and they will hit the unsubscribe page and they will unsubscribe lots and lots of, uh, of your contacts without actually realizing what's happening. So the first time we had this case, we figured out like we sent out a campaign for, um, I think 200,000. 
and uh, around 50,000 of them unsubscribed immediately. Like we send it at 12, at 12.01, like quarter of the, of the patch just unsubscribed, which uh, like incurred a lot of load on our servers. So uh, we found the common pattern between all of them and it was like a Python bot accessing those pages and unsubscribing our users. So uh, I urge all of you to use the preference center where you, where you can ask your uh, leads to subscribe to specific segments and have a specific contact preference like a week, two times a week, three times a week. And that will help you prevent the bots, that's one thing. And another thing, it will build the confidence between you and your clients. Uh, it's a tricky part a little bit. If your uh, marketer does not understand segments and does not understand what a marketing segment is, you will end up with a preference center that says segment test one, test two, what the hell is going on here? And people will just report, report that back. So watch out. Okay, as for segmentation, one filter that is really important is when was the last time somebody read your emails? So those who do not open your emails for say like three months, this is the standard video that I use, I would mark them as an archived lead. I would not send out emails to these guys. I would wait, I will try to reactivate them or find the triggering points on the website or other channels where these leads are active again and I will try to access these leads from that specific channel and reactivate them to the emails. So always have a segment where those who did not read your emails and archive all the leads there, don't put them in, in, in another campaign because if you do that, uh, probably they will report you as a spam or they will unsubscribe and both of these cases we don't want to happen. So this is a very good hack that you can use as a very good filter from, from Motec. Before we dive into the technical elements, I want to share with you a large document um, to know your clients as a marketer. Uh, so we start with general questions about the business, how many years they have been doing that, what is the total list size, uh, what kind of email service they use, what kind of IBs, what kind of domains, what kind of content, what type of the ROU, the ROI they have. It's a really a very long document, but um, I, I urge all of you to combine that kind of document when you onboard a new client or when you try to sell to a new client, you ask them like, what is your situation? Um, I'm telling you when I use this document, even before I close deals with my clients, it would close faster. Like you send them out emails, they will understand that they are in a bad situation. They will tell like, this, these people are experts, let's just work with them. So prepare a document where you ask the basic questions about businesses in terms of return on investment, in terms of lead generation, in terms of email lists um, and marketing. All of these together would uh, make a very good uh, case for you to sell the marketing automation solution that you have and the campaigns that you have. And based on that, we move into the technical part and the implementation part. So all of this will give you a background of the business that you are trying to sell to. It will give you a uh, full understanding of how the marketing department works there. What is the connection between the marketing and the investment or the CEO or the management? All of these together combined with the practices and the technical parts all together would make a good sending practice. Okay. As for the technical elements, and that's where things get confusing. Lots of uh, acronyms, lots of letters, lots of things that you need to configure. And that is where most of the marketers get confused. Uh, so the first thing that you, you have to put in mind when you start sending out emails is that you need to authenticate your domain. And that happens on almost all the platforms that you send out emails from, whether it's SendGrid, uh, uh, sorry, yeah whether it's SendGrid, SES, MailJet, or any provider that you have, even if you have your own infrastructure, your IB infrastructure, you need to authenticate all of, uh, all of your IB ranges and all of your servers. So uh, the first thing that you need to do is to set up a record and on the DNS on your domain called the SPF record. Basically, SPF is um, a way to tell all the, uh, the other domains and all the uh, DNS is there who's allowed to send on my behalf. So if you don't do this step, your emails will definitely go to spam. So start off of identifying your IBs, like how many IBs do you own and you are sending from, and all the domains that you are allowed to send from. 
One of the good hacks here, if you have, for example, Google.com, do not send emails directly from Google.com. Send out from a.google.com. So in case that got blocked, uh, you can maintain your reputation uh, for the main IP, and but you are sending from another domain. Or you can, for example, buy steercampaign.com and steercampaign.net, and you send out emails from the .net while maintaining the .com as a, uh, a web interface. So the first thing you need to do is the SPF record. We will show exa an example uh, using SES on how to set up this, uh, this uh, record. Then we need to define the DKIM, which is another protocol uh, to detect the email spoofing. So it's, it, it's a little bit technical. It's, uh, it's a text record, usually a bunch of text records, like three or four um, public keys that uh, when we send out emails, we sign the emails, we're using these keys. And when the recipients like the uh, yeah, email filters and the spam filters receive it, they would match the key, the signature key, with the key that you published, and they would say, like, this is an authentic sender. Uh, one record that people usually miss, which is the DMARC, uh, which mixes both of them. It mixes the SPF and the DKIM. Uh, this record is op optional, but I strongly encourage all of you to have it there. It basically... Uh, uh, what it does, it, it asks the, uh, the spam filters to send out a report saying how they categorize the emails we sent. So say you are sending an email where the, spam, the SPF record is right, but the DKIM is wrong. So the spam filter will reply back to you with an XML object, and that XML would say, we received an email from you at this time, and this is the result of the spam filtering. So it will give you an, um, a real understanding of how your email performance is doing, um, you will know what is the content is doing, what is the uh, images are doing, the links, and uh, the signature itself. So it will give you uh, a general overview, and I will share with you a tool of how you can do that. Also, we need to do a reverse DNS or BTR. This feature is not, or this DNS record is not available on shared plans. So if you use, for example, Mailgun or SES or Sendegrid with the uh, with the shared plans, you cannot do this because you need to have a dedicated uh, IB. So basically, this would tell uh, the email servers which uh, domain names you have. So in, in the internet, we usually have the domain name pointing to an IP address. With the pointer uh, DNS records, it's the reverse. We have the IP address would tell us which domain name we own. So if you want to add reliability to your email, you would say, I really own this domain. I really own this IP. I have the SPM, uh, the SPF. So I. I told the spam filters, I own this IP, I have the DKIM, I signed my content, I told the spam send, uh, filter that I signed my content, then I mix both of them, then I would tell all the links inside the emails because they are owned by me because the IP address is pointing to my domain. So all of these elements together would reduce the possibility of hitting the spam filter. As for the custom domains, is how the links are being tracked. So as you know, Motic rewrites the links, all the links within the uh, email body. And uh, when uh, we write them, we need a custom domain, and that's what Motic would do for you. A common mistake that I often see is that, uh, for example, when you use Sendegrid, you would ask Sendegrid to rewrite the, uh, the domain. So th you need to disable that option. So Motic is actually the one rewriting the, the links, not Sendegrid. Otherwise, you will have double redi redirects one from Sandigrad and the other from Modic, and that would lower your score again. So, uh, we will go a little bit through some of the tools. Um, I use this one, I hope it's not kind of marketing for them, but it's all uh, easy. Uh, DMARC, would, it would collect all the feedbacks from the spam filters, it would show you uh, aggregate reports of how your IBs are doing, uh, which domains you are sending to, which domains are complaining about your content, and you can adjust either by segmenting your list based on the domain, and this is something we will discuss in a bit. And also, it has a, some tools that allows you to see how is your policy, is it valid, is not, and the DNS record. So, simple click here, you would see how is the configuration? It's, it's um, a very long string, but it helps you uh, configure your domain the right way. Same thing goes for SPF. We don't have an SPF record here because we are not sending from this domain. DKIM, the same thing. And there is a new thing that emerged into the market, which is 
the BAMI. Um, this is um, applicable only to large clients where they have like registered their uh, logo, their brand name. Uh, it, it's basically, you know, when you open your Gmail, you would find the logo of the company like Mercedes, IBM, you will find the logo of the company instead of having a, a letter uh, as, the, as an icon. And this is a very large process and you need to have all the legal documents that you own the specific logo and the specific brand name. You have to buy a certificate from DigiCert and the process would take three to six months uh, depending on the, where your country, which country you are uh, registered in, what kind of documents approve your ownership of the logo. But once you have the BIMI, your email delivery rates will increase because it's 100% valid. You own the IBs, you have all the records right, and uh, you have it right all around here. So this is the first tool that you understand. You, you need to understand the news. Um, as most of you probably know, I'm, I'm a big fan of SES. I use it a lot. Um, the records that you need to add, which is mentioned on, um, on the documentation, you need to identify your, your identity. So if it's not identify, identified, you will not be able to send. And, uh, and if you were able to send for some reason, like if you are using another system, all of these emails will land on the spam folder immediately. Uh, you need also to do the bounce back management, which is also mentioned in the documentation. And you need to configure the custom email, uh, the custom domain, and add it to your, to your system. So all of these elements together would set up the foundation for good email uh, delivery. Of course, if you have a bad content, you will go to spam. If you have lots of, con uh, lots of links, you will go to spam. Um, even if you have all of these things together connected right. Um, also, um, the dedicated IB, which is the thing we mentioned uh, during the SPF uh, part, if you are sending a huge number of emails, usually more than half a million, usually more half than a million, you need a dedicated IB. You don't want to share the reputation of the IB with other people. So uh, just buy an IB from one of the providers. Make sure that you always watch uh, what's going on with this specific IB in terms of reputation. One cool and free uh, tool is Postmasters from Google. So with Google, you just add the domain, you verify your domain, and it will show you how your domain is performing and how your IBs are performing over a period of time. And also it gives you IB reputation for each month or each week. So this type of monitoring tool will give you an overview how, of how your IBs are doing. Uh, a good advice is to keep always a pool of IBs uh, that are clean and you start ditching out or deleting out the IBs with low performance and replace them with fresh IBs. Of course, you need to do this process gradually with a warm-up process that we will discuss in, uh, in a bit. Okay, I will skip this slide for a second when we go to the, um, the content and how we connect all the dots together and understanding how the email is, is uh, evaluated for the, from the spam filters. So the spam filters logic, it's like there is no published document on how the specific, like each specific spam filter works. So Gmail works on a specific way, uh, Yahoo in a different way, uh, Hotmail in a different way. So you need to have like a holistic view of how the whole thing works together. So the logic apparently works like this. It starts with the uh, IB and DNS records. Then if all that checks, you move down to uh, the content itself. It looks into the subject line, how customized it is. So we can use uh, the tokens, Motic tokens to replace, like to add the first name and the content in the subject line. That would show a unique subject line for each specific uh, lead. And we also have to look into the spammy words, like uh, I'm the Nigerian prince, but avoid that. Also, you need to have a text to HTML ratio 60 to 40. Don't have a lot of, uh, of HTML in your content. Like do not send, for example, one banner and that's it in the content. Also have the uh, text version of, of your emails. Check out the links, don't have a lot of links. Also have a lot of personalization and have unsubscribed links and unsubscribed headers. So one way to debug all of this all together, just go to Gmail.
So if I if I'm analyzing this, all I have to go to the three dots here, and we need to see the original. You would see how your server is performing with with the spam filters of uh, Gmail, for example. The things that you need to look at is, for example, this is this one. Did your DKIM filter actually pass? So this is one way to trace if there is something that needs to be done here. Uh, another thing is the SPF, which we can find here as well. And this is the DMRC. And you can see all of these together are configured to understand how it works. So these guys are doing the best practices. As you can see here, this is an airline, by the way, uh, sending from a directmarketing.airarabia.com, so it's not the root domain. Um, they have a specific IP address that they are sending from, and it's a permitted sender, and that's specified with the SPF. And they signed their emails with the uh, DKIM. The, this is the uh, starting point, and from that, you go forward into other headers, other important headers, which is like feedback ID. This is something that we do not manipulate with Motic. It's usually generated by the system that sends out the email. We also need the header like list unsubscribe. Um, one point that you need to put in mind that this header needs to be removed from transactions as emails like reset passwords. And I think this is something we will, we will be working on soon uh, to remove this kind of headers. All of these together would like be the starting point for the filters on how they work. Then they move into your content. So the first part of the content is the HTML part of the email, which I think all of you are familiar with. It, it would trace the links. It would trace the content. And then you would have the text part. So here we don't have the text part. It's always a good practice to have the text part and the HTML part all together uh, in, in, the same, in the same place. So this is how email spam filters work. This is how it uh, analyzes the uh, performance of your, of your email. Um, for large senders, like those who send like half a million or more, as I said, you need a dedicated IP address. So, or addresses. Usually we start with two, with two IP addresses and we move uh, forward from that, from that point. There's a very uh, important process called the email warm-up, where you need to warm up the IP. The warm-up basically is telling all the spam filters out there that this set of IPs or range of IPs is, um, belongs to us, and we are sending gradually from it. Uh, so to, for your understanding, what happens is when you purchase an IP, you start sending out from this IP until you reach a point, then you move to the, to the company's IPs, until this IP is warmed up. Um, so we need to warm up our IPs manually. Most of the companies have their own uh, algorithm for warming up, and this algorithm basically works on dividing the domains that you are sending to. So for example, if we have a list with a thousand emails and all of them with Gmail, it's not a good practice that we send one patch from a new IP to Gmail at once from this IP because uh, Gmail would say, I never know, know this IP before, I don't know if it really belongs to you. Even if you have the SPF and all the records right, it would say, like, I don't know this IB. You are sending a lot of, I of emails from the specific IB, so I will block it or I will make it spam. So you need to, to start warming up in an exponential base. So the first day you would say 100 emails, second day 200 emails, then 400, then 1,600, up until the domain is uh, warmed up. And you have to do it per domain. So at Hotmail, at Gmail, at Yahoo at whatever, uh, to make sure that you are sending to the, uh, to the right domain. This process is not easy to be done with Motic, so you need a custom field, custom field that indicates the domain of each specific email. And usually we do it via CSV. It's, it's not a very easy process. And then you segment these IBs and you start sending out the emails gradually, day by day, segment by segment, up until your domains are uh, fully warmed up. When you have a warm-up email, what, what you are actually telling the uh, spam filter is that those people who are, we are sending to are actually intera interacting with the IBs. They are opening the, uh, the IBs, they are opening the emails that originate from these IBs, and this is how you warm up the IB, and this is how people are interacting with it. And based on that, uh, you do uh, the sending. Uh, before I wrap up, uh, 
there is one thing that uh, need, we need to put in mind, which is the Q mode and the immediate mode in Motive. When you use the immediate mode, you are basically sending via the ABI. Oh, sorry. So when you send from the immediate mode, you are basically uh, using the ABI to send out emails. So you are sending in batches. Most of the email systems that Motic supports uh, support up to a thousand email per patch. So when you sound, uh, when you send out a thousand emails per call, um, that sometimes would impact the performance of your campaign. Uh, so my personal suggestion is always to use the Q mode. It has advantages, lots of advantages, and two disadvantages. Um, the advantage of the Q mode, if somebody sends the wrong email, you just go to your server, delete all the files in this pool, and reset the campaign, and like if it's not, nothing happened. But when you do the immediate, it's, it's a cold cut. Like you have to do it and it should be right and the, all the emails should be sent. And uh, when you do it with the immediate mode, like if the browser crashes, sometimes the patch will not send out, but for the queue, it will always send. Um, the, the queue mode, the, the bad thing about it, it stores files, so it has a lot of, it, it, it would take a lot of storage space. And for the uh, cron job that, that sends out the email, you need to have different threads running at the same time to achieve the speed of sending uh, to match the provider. So for example, here in SES, you, you can see that we have like a quota of half a million emails in each 24 hours and 160 emails per second. This 160 can be achieved with the immediate, with the immediate mode but it cannot be achieved with the queue mode because the queue would send one email at a time due to the nature of how, how it's programmed. Um, but with the, ABI, with, the, with the immediate mode, we can send the patches of 160 per second. So you need to respect that. And there's a cool hack about it, like you can configure um, the cron job to work with multiple threads. So this is a bash script that you can add to your cron job. So instead of running the email sent immediately from the cron job, you just can have a bash script that uh, spins out 50 processes and sleeps one second between each 50 process, and that would send 50 emails per call per second. And that would increase it. It would like impose a little bit of, of load on your server, but I think with, uh, uh, with, with, the, with the capabilities of the servers that we have right now, it wouldn't be a huge problem. So this like wraps up how you should think about email sending, and I hope you had like a good time with us. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, questions? Yes. So you guys have. Thank you. Thank you. Should I be an uh, You touched on it briefly, um, but I would like to ask you what is your favorite setup of subdomains when doing a uh, email sending setup, like, like sending domain, bounce domain, etc. What do you recommend to customers? Sending domain is one, one domain for sure. Like that is one, one, one for sure for marketing. So you can say like marketing.domain.com and another one for transactional. So transactional.domain.com. And these, like that's, that's how it starts. If you have multiple campaigns or multiple types of campaigns that you want to send from different domains, although this is not a very good practice, you can separate the domains by the campaign type. But it's usually marketing and transactional. We split them and we give this, like this type of domain. Uh, set of IBs and this type of domain set of IBs. Usually the transaction is lower in volume, but we need to have like to make sure that it, it hits the inbox a hundred time, like hundred percent of the time. Meanwhile, the marketers we can live with some bounces and some emails, but both of them they need to be monitored, and all the bounces need to be collected, and it needs to be uh, like marked as bounce on all the systems. So it usually the marketing automation system is outside the original app that the client is selling. So the uh, webhook that comes back, that marks an email as spam from both subdomains, needs to mark in both systems that this contact is actually do not contact, to mark it as do not contact. So this is the usual setup that we do. So you're not using the bounce domain setting? Uh, webhooks would handle it. We don't need a bounce domain. There is no need for it. Right, right now, all the systems, would have a webhook, just handle the webhook and mark your contacts everywhere, that's it. Thank you. Questions? Um, 
You talked about warming up your IP address and sending batches to each um, uh, provider. Yes. Um, would you do this with, let's say for Gmail, you have one multi instance sending in batches to Gmail and then one for, I don't know, T online and so on and so forth? Or how do you do it in, in, in well, different if, instances? If, if, if your client is happy with having different instances for their efforts, that's fine, you can do that. But uh, I think like separating, having a custom field that indicates the lead email. Okay, so say uh, aki at gmail.com, I would just take the at gmail.com and put it in a custom field. And then I would build segments of those who are from Gmail, those from Hotmail. And when I start warming up the, the IP address, I would have like segments that mixes contacts from uh, each specific domain into one patch and send it out because the, the numbers that you are sending to are relatively small. So you start out with 500, for example, 1,000, then 2,000, 4,000, 16,000, up until you reach a point where it's, it's stable and then you can send to everybody. So this is how we usually do it. Yes, um, that's, I get this part, but um, how do you do it in, in one instance in Mautic if you're sending with several um, several providers back then. Let's say with SES, mm -hmm. if you you can you can in the back end you can define one SES API for example. And if you have several segments, how do you do it in, 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 in one multi instance that you send the majority of emails in the beginning through the regular API with the shell? Ah okay yeah, yeah yeah I got your point. Okay. So with with SES, for example, of course, all the other providers have some, uh, something similar. Uh, there is something called configuration sets with SES. So with configuration set, you just say, when I send with this configuration set, so you add it to the header, uh, which is X underscore configuration underscore set, and you specify the set name, you would say, if I send with this header, use this IP address. Yes. If I send, yeah, and this is also applicable with SendGrid and Mailgun. Right now, the SendGrid, like with Motic, the SendGrid integration does not support uh, this specific type of configuration set. Uh, hopefully, we will have a batch for that soon. Uh, but with SES, it's already supported. You can use the configuration set to define which IP address you want to send out from. Yes. That, that's the point. Yes. Okay. okay. Sure. Thank you. Um, I had a question for all the terms you have for like the SPV yes. stuff because I'm more serious, but I am not in the technical stuff. Yes. But how do I specify that, and how can I make like that custom domain so I can see like which emails oh, okay. go uh, through the spam filter and which do okay. not? So, so the whole process starts with identifying, like verifying your domain. So when you when you want to send out from a specific domain, you go you like you purchase one of these services, SendGrid or SES or whatever. And the first step always to do is to verify your domain. So when you here, for example, create an identity, like uh, SES, they have like strange lingo, but it's it's basically how to uh, verify your domain. So when you verify your domain, they will provide you with a set of records that you need to add. So. These are the C names for the DKIM. You just take the first part and the second part and you add them to your domain. As for the SPF, we, we can use SPF generator. And how do you add them? Like, do you do that in or? No, you, you, uh, like with the domain that you purchase, for example, x.com, you go to the domain register that you paid the domain from, like GoDaddy, for example. You go to the DNS and you add the DNS records into that specific domain. Let me see if I have GoDaddy open. Okay. Uh, where is the English man? Ah, okay. Oh, Hong Kong, English, 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 English. Yeah. That's good. to give a blood sample for this. <laughs> 
So. Would you agree that if you are an marketer, then you have someone to do this type of stuff for you? Most of the time, yes. Most of the time, yes. Like as a marketer, but it's always good for a marketer to understand what's going on behind the scenes. That's true, but to a certain level. To a certain level. Like it, it would drive both of them crazy. Like the marketer would say, I did everything right, but it's not, uh, it's not achieving the inbox. And at the same time, the IT person would say, your content's crabby. So... So this is how you do it. Like this is GoDaddy. You will have you will have all the uh, the DNS records here. You just go to this tab. Of course, this applies to your specific host or register. So you just have to add these records into this uh, to this place. And once you verify them, everything will work. And it like each specific system would show that the configuration was uh, was set right. As for the SPF, you need to use generators. Uh, so the SPF is is a text record. So you have to manipulate it a little bit and then add it to the same place. So all of these records are added to the DNS and this is how you verify all the uh, configuration. Okay, and last question, how do you define your domain name? Because we have like a website that has a domain, but our Mautic uh, account has another domain. Th that is the right approach. Like, it's not recommended that you have Mautic, unless your website is purely lead generation and Mautic can do all the things that you need, uh, which, which it really does. Uh, so have Motic on a different uh, subdomain and you can send out from the verified domain. So like this is the distinction. So Motic is running on a domain, that's one thing. When you are sending out from a Motic, that's another domain, that's another story. So the reputation applies to this one, not to this one, except in one case, when somebody clicks on the link, they will come to your Motic domain, which handles all the links. So it's a good practice to have separation like your website, Motic domain and the email sending domain, but they all should work together to make the market automation the right way. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any more questions? Any questions. I have one about uh, email cleaning. Yes. That you didn't mention. What what tools are you using for that? Uh, there are like a couple of tools. So never bounce is one of them. Debounce is one of them. Um, so to give you a brief of how these systems work, uh, so basically you will have a CSV list of all the email addresses. You upload them to the system and it analyzes all, all the emails and it would categorize them to valid emails, invalid emails, catch all emails, support emails, and then you just download the emails that are right and you send out, the, uh, send out emails to them. But it wouldn't gen like guarantee that it's 100% accurate. It takes into account variables like, is this domain new? Is it recent? Is it casual? Like support at, admin at, uh, does the email address or the domain points to another domain? So all of these factors would impact your delivery rates. So I, I, I personally use Neverbounce. Uh, it's relatively not that high. Uh, there's also like um, ABIs provided from SendGrid and Mailgun, where you can clean up your list on, on their system. And one good thing is you can add a, like a JavaScript in, in your forms and it would detect if the email address comes from Gmail, Hotmail, if it's an invalid email, and it would prevent somebody from submitting a form uh, to your Motic. So two, like these two, uh, two combined is, is a good practice. And you also can like, use a, a curl command to send out your, uh, your contacts directly to Neverbounce and get a list that, that are clean. And using webhooks, you can clean Motic immediately from one, one place, like a centralized place. Okay, cool. <laughs> Thank you. It was really interesting. Thank you. Uh, to continue on, on this, what, you're, what you're saying, uh, this plugin to validate the emails in the front end, uh, info, is it something that's contributed? Can we find it somewhere or is it something that you custom built? Uh, we, can, we can contribute that, yeah. Why not? Because we're very interested in that. Sure, sure. Okay, on the other side, any questions? <laughs> One more thing came up. You mentioned about the warm up. So yeah. you're slowly pushing the content. Two questions about this. So this content is provided by the marketers. Yeah. Uh, how do you know that it will be good enough for, for a warm up? Because they say this is what we want to push because it's great. Buy masks. So, <laughs> uh, one thing that marketers don't like is data. 
use data, like see what historically worked, what performed well, and based on that, send out emails. Like that would make a great content. That is the easiest hack. Okay, so you say whatever was the best. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And how does it look when the warm up doesn't work? So you reach, let's say, 1600 on that IP, and how do you know that you can, you can raise the ball? Yeah, uh, so uh, like the first thing, uh, like you send out an email for, say, 50 people. Don't make it big, like 50 people. If 15 out of 50 interacted with your content, that means it's good. You, like you move to the next tier. Uh, of course, you need to look into the bounce rates for this specific segment and the complaints. If it's high for the 50, stop. Like, hold the process, start again with a different set of people. But do not insist on, like, because here it's, it's all about the quality of the content. If everything is right, the quality of the content is the key. And also one good tip is look for those who are aggressively uh, interacting with your content. So check out their activity log, see who opened multiple emails of yours, and send out to this specific segment. Okay, thanks. And sure. then one, one more really. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, it's uh, about the complaints. So okay. in many systems, when you send a, send a, a campaign, you get very detailed reports about delivered, opened, unsubscribed, bounced, mm -hmm. complaint. Yes. We don't have this. Mike, we only have unsubscribed and bounced. So there you monitor the complaints. In, in or maybe I'm wrong. No, in, in, in Motic, the complaints are actually marked as bounce, like, which is do not contact. I think the, the way we think of it as do not contact is a better way than categorizing what's a hard bounce, what's a soft bounce. So a hard bounce, basically, the email does not exist. Okay, like one of them, like hard bounce, the email does not exist, or the domain does not exist, or there's no MX configured for that specific domain. The soft bounce could be um, the email is full. The recipient cannot receive more emails, so we can try again. After, the, after a while, it's a hard bounce. As for the complaint itself, the complaint, it's basically somebody going to the email and clicking complain, I don't want to receive this. What, what happens is you get a, a, a complaint bounce back. So with SES, you get a complaint webhook that states the, the reason of the complaint. And in Motic, we uh, put it as bounce. So there is no differentiation between bounce and complaint in Motic. Both of them are do not contact. We mark them as, as do not contact because that I think that's the logical way to see, like to, to look at it. Like what would you do if you know that people are complaining about this content compared to pounced content? So I would definitely tell the marketer that it's not, you know, this is really bad. So maybe that's that's why it would make sense to to see it. Uh, plus we have in SES is giving us two channels, well, one is the bounce, the other one mm -hmm. complain. So do you think it would make sense to have another setting to show that it's uh, a complaint or it's really just too much information? For SES we record that. Like we add it to the the reason of do not contact. So if you go to Motic, create a report of all the people, uh, like make the source as DNS, okay? Do not contact. You would find which channel they unsubscribe from and the reason. So for SES, because I programmed it, I know, I know that we keep a, a log of why people complain, like what's the reason of the complaint. So you would have it there. Uh, but like in order to make it like something meaningful, you need to download all the reports and come up with like this piece of contact, which is the channel ID in the reporting, is the channel ID. This piece of content, it's really bad, and this is the reason why people uh, are not uh, are not like uh, in interacting with it. But usually, the the reason, like what we get out from SES, is a technical reason. Like it's a soft bounce because it's full. It's a soft bounce because the system said it's bounce. So you would not really know other than that it says like the spam filter or re or Gmail reported that this is. Uh, was reported as a complaint. That's the only information that you will get. That's really cool. I didn't know that you can filter like that. That's you great. can do that. You are. Okay, any, any more questions about emailing, which is the most important thing ever? No? Okay. Okay. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank, Thank you. Thank you.